Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, Ken, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call right here on Pittsburgh CW. Seven nights a week, we're taking your calls at 412-575-2600. That is the Bordis and Bordis hotline. You can also tweet the program at KD Pomp, at Gene Collier. We're at your service tonight talking sports, so give us a shout, give us a tweet, let's talk. And we'll begin with the Pirates, who had an 11-game win streak, came to an end yesterday, although you can understand that against Cleveland. They still took two out of three, come home to take on the lowly Mets, and played lower than the Mets. It was a very sloppy game tonight at PNC Park. Nick Kingham couldn't get out of his own way. Quite frankly, I was surprised that Clint Hurdle let him bat in the bottom of the third the way he was going. He came out to the fourth, gave up a two-run home run, and the rest was just a case of adding on. Pirates lose 12-6. And you didn't expect that against this team. Uh, they have Jacob de Grom, who leads the uh, National League in earn run average, coming up on Saturday night. So this is one of those games you would have liked to have won. Gene Collier, outstanding columnist from the Post Gazette, is here. And Gene, sometimes you can expect this. You know, after a long road trip, you do so well, come home, expect to yeah. beat up on this team, and then that team beats up on you. Yeah, I mean, uh, having the uh, winning streak snapped yesterday, Bob, without scoring a run, four nothing at Cleveland. Uh, so you come back the next day and you score six, that's good. Uh, but really, nobody pitched uh, worth a fish, so, <laughs> you know, 12-6. Uh, Mama said there'd be days like this, and uh, that's one of them. It's good to get it out of the way. Still 13 of 16, so uh, don't panic. Yeah, that's right, but they lost a game to the Cubs. If you're looking at the division, that drops mm -hmm. them to eight back, and the Cubs were down 6-4 to into the bottom of the ninth today against Arizona, and then they hit a, a two-run home run. Uh, and then a game-winning walk-off by Anthony Rizzo. So they came back and won that game 7-6. to six. Also, some acquisitions in baseball. Gene, the Pirates' name has not been tied to anything so far from what I can tell, although it wouldn't surprise me if both Mercer and Harrison were traded just for financial reasons. But Chicago went out and, according to reports, have acquired lefty Cole Hamels, a veteran of the game. And, boy, the Rangers have given them a lot. Hugh Darvish was acquired by them. Um, you know, the Rangers, he was with New, uh, Texas and now is with Chicago. Although he has not pitched, he's getting closer. If he gets healthy, boy, those two guys should give them a little jolt in the arm as they go down the stretch. Yeah, the Cubs wish the Rangers had not given them New Darvish. I mean, he's making a fortune and doing nothing. Maybe that'll change. Uh, and the Pirates have kind of a built-in excuse now. Well, look, we won 11 in a row, 13 out of 16. We were pounding first-place teams. There was no reason we had to add anything. Uh, so they can stick to that story if they want to. We'll see how it uh, unfolds uh, prior to the deadline, July 31st, which, Bob, as you know, is not a deadline at all. You can still trade players after that as long as you have waivers on them. That's exactly right. But it is a deadline followed by another deadline, right. <laughs> the way things go in baseball. All right, let's talk about the Steelers, Gene. They got into day one of their training camp, and there are a lot of different ways to look at it. Ben Roethlisberger looked good, looked like he lost a lot of weight. He said he gave up carbs and sugar, and um, he is trying to play three to five more years, as he said, in this offseason after the release of Todd Haley. Uh, but, you know, this offense to me doesn't necessarily have a concern. I look at their defense and still I wonder about how they're going to, um, you know, compensate for the loss of Ryan Chazier and also become a little bit more steady in the tackle department. They got shredded in the run defense last year on quite a few occasions, and that needs to change. Well, that's intriguing that uh, Ben lost weight because uh, the Steelers have listed Ben at either 6'5", 241 or 6'5", 240 in every single season of his career. So what would you say he is, Bob? Uh, he just looks better. I don't know. I mean, the eye test tells me he's lost weight. He looks thinner, um, looks younger to me, and yeah. so that's good. I mean, if he's trying to play, he's taking the right steps in this offseason, so we'll see. But... You have to stay away from injury. Their offensive line has done a pretty good job of keeping them clean the last yeah. couple of years, and that, I think, is very important moving sure. forward. All right, we have a lot to get into, so call us. Let us know, by the way, the Penguins made a move tonight and signed Tristan Jari, the backup goaltender, or at least somebody who they hope is the backup. They also have Casey DeSmith. He gets a, a two-year, two-way deal for the first year and then a one-way deal the second year, which to me says that 
they're not totally committed or at least confident in what he's done. Although last year, 14 wins was most by any rookie goaltender in the NHL. So I think he still has a lot of upside and they get him inked for two more years. 412-575-2600 is the number. I want to remind you later on the show, we have a Roos Chris Sizzlin shot All to right. tell you about. That's right, a high five That's to a local golfer who got a hole in one. Who is he? We'll tell you who he is and where he did it. The Sizzling Shot is brought to you by Roos Chris at 6 PPG Place downtown, home of the sizzling steak done right. We continue right after this.